Good morning. It's uh, so good to be up here with each and every one of you today. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, Really, what Alex was saying just a second ago about Hope Church and the door of hope, that has been uh, my journey over the last 10 years. When I entered through the doors of Hope Church 10 years ago, um, everything changed for me. My spiritual journey just took off. And that's really what I want to share with you today because it made all the difference in my life. And I know it can make a difference in yours and already has. Um, And so I just want to kind of share what this last 10 years have looked like for me. And so um, I grew up right here in Burlington, actually right outside of Burlington in Altima Hall. Anybody know Altima Hall? Can you say Altima Hall? I had to know how to spell that when I was a kindergartner. That was hard. Um, But Altima Hall, grew up in Altima Hall. And uh, at 10 years old, I asked Jesus into my life. And I, I actually, what Alex was talking about with the stained glass window, I recognize it uh, because I attended that very same church uh, that Alex grew up in. We grew up in uh, the same church together. And um, it was a wonderful church. I, it was a, a, a traditional Baptist church, and I was there on Sunday mornings. I was there on Sunday nights. I was there on Wednesday nights. And so three services a week, and I was just taking it in, right? It was this biblical knowledge that was just being poured over me, and I loved it. Like, I loved learning. Um, and, and with that, the type of person that I am, I'm a rule follower <laughs> by nature. That's me. I'm a rule follower. I'm type A. So I'm like checking these boxes off. I know what to do, what not to do. You give me two lines, I'll stay in between them. I'm really good at that. Um, and that's where I was living my life. And so I would have told you as a teenager that I was thriving in my Christian walk. But at about 19 years old, um, I started to kind of question like, is this it? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is there not something bigger that I'm supposed to be stepping into. And I started to wrestle with that question. And I thought about the Great Commission. And I wanna share with you those verses that are the Great Commission. Um, And Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20, so the very last uh, verses in the book of Matthew. Jesus says, "'Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, "'baptizing them in the name of the Father "'and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, "'teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And so, like I said, I knew that that this was the Great Commission and that Jesus was talking to his disciples in this moment, like the very last words that he speaks to his disciples in the book of Matthew. And I knew that for me as a Christ follower, that I was a disciple and that that was my job. And so that command, it applied to me, but I had no idea how to do it, how to walk in that in my own life. Um, Honestly, I would have said that for me, being prepared to, to go out and make disciples was just knowing if somebody came up to me and said, hey, Jenny, who's Jesus? That I could tell them about it. But as far as this call to go and do, I didn't know how to go and do. And so just to tie in real quick my relationship with Alex, uh, like he said, he is my brother-in-law. Um, and so that means I'm married to his brother. Um, that's my husband over there. His name's Trent. And uh, yeah, woo! <laughs> I love him. Um, but uh, Trent and I, we were actually in first grade together. Um, my first grade teacher has a picture of us at Pajama Day, standing beside each other, like being cool kids in our PJs. Um, and still to this day, when we see Miss White, she, uh, she's like, oh, my babies, my babies, you're together now. Um, anyway, but Trent and I started dating in high school, my senior year of high school. And uh, at the time, Alex my brother-in-law, he was working here at Hope and he was the student Hope director. And so at 19 years old, when I told you I began to start wrestling with this question of what is my role in the Great Commission and how do I go out, how do I do? um, Alex invited Trent to Hope, which means by default, I was invited too. And so we came and we walked in through the doors um, of Hope Church. And that's when things changed for us. And so one of the first things that we did um, was, was we got involved in student Hope. And so on top of being here on Sunday mornings and hearing the worship and the messages and being just finally given direction on on how to go out and and just truly um, make a difference in the lives around us, we also began volunteering at Student Hope. And guys, working with students is hard. Dustin, you know it. Um, But working with students is hard. But Trent and I, uh, we started working with seventh grade. I had seventh grade girls that I was leading in a small group. Trent has seventh grade boys. Um, and wow, God used that season to teach us and to grow us. I can remember, I think I was 20 years old and I was transporting some girls from a, a service that we had just been at and we maybe were going to spend the night at somebody's house. I don't really remember exactly the details, but I have my car full of girls, seventh grade, eighth grade girls. And uh, I think we were listening to the Backstreet Boys 
And they were just throwing down in the back seat, just having a good time dancing. And uh, one of my girls just pops the other girl in the face with her elbow, and then blood is just everywhere. And so I'm 20 years old, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll handle this. Anyway, um, that's just has nothing to do with anything. I just remember how hard it was working with teenagers. <laughs> it scarred me for life. But guys, like I said, it grew me so much in that season. I thought I was going to volunteer with these students because I had something to give them, but they had everything to give me. And God grew me. He grew me in my faith. Um, he grew me in how to love people well. It was a wonderful time. Um, in addition to volunteering, my husband and I also joined grow groups. And if you're new to Hope Church and you're not sure what a grow group is, um, grow groups are just groups of people, about 10 to 12 people that meet uh, once a week and typically are, are doing a book study or um, looking, watching a video series or reviewing sermons, um, just going over things that are pushing them towards Jesus, right? They're, they're gathering in groups together and growing in Jesus together. Um, and so Trent and I joined many different grow groups over our 10-year journey. And guys, that's where we met our people. That's where we found the people that we do life with still to this day. Um, and so in 2016, we finally had graduated college and finally had jobs so we could get married, right? And so that's what we did in 2016, we got married. This is a picture of our wedding party. And the reason that I wanna show you this wedding party is because every single person in our wedding party were connected to Hope Church. They were our people then, right, in that community that I'm talking about, this community that we entered into through Go Groups, they were our people, and they were there on our wedding day to celebrate this really big high in our life of getting married. That was them. And I want to pause right there and just talk about the importance of community for just a second. And I know this because I've lived it, but community is everything. It's so important. Um, I think that not only do you need community, you need community that is running after Jesus alongside of you, community that is pushing you towards Jesus, community that when you kind of veer off and you're kind of not in those lines that I was talking about earlier, that they're gonna hook their arm into yours and they're gonna pull you back and say, hey, come on, come over here. Or when you're losing endurance and you start to fall behind, that community is gonna grab you and say, all right, come on, let's go. You got this, keep going. That's the community that you need. And that's the community that Trent and I found when we walked through the doors of hope. And so, like I said, that community was there for us when we were celebrating our big things like our wedding. Um, but that community has also been there for us in the really hard times. And, and if you've been alive for any time at all, you know that life can get really, really hard. And so a couple years into us getting married, uh, we decided it was time to start a family. And so we um, ha had tried to get pregnant and it had been about six months and uh, we just hadn't gotten pregnant yet. And so decided that it was probably a good idea for me to go to the doctor and just check in and see if everything was, you know, right, if everything was gonna be okay, if there was something that we needed to be aware of. And so I go to the doctor, and if I'm being honest, I don't think that I expected anything to be wrong at all. Um, but that's not what I was told when I went. And uh, the doctor didn't really present things to me in a, a way that was very like uplifting, but uh, she said, you have some roadblocks that are gonna keep you um, from, from being able to have a child. And, and she said, you have three roadblocks actually. She said, the first is, is a condition that I had that she said, it's not likely that you'll get pregnant. You're gonna have a hard time getting pregnant. Uh, but then she said, road, roadblock number two, um, if you get pregnant, Jenny, um, it's not likely that you'll be able to carry a baby full term. And then from there, she said, and then by chance you were to get pregnant and by chance you carried that baby long enough to reach delivery, she said, you're gonna have some difficulties with that as well. And um, like I said, I, I wasn't expecting any of it. And so it crushed me. It crushed me like to the core, it crushed me. Um, if you've ever dealt with infertility or you've walked alongside of somebody who um, has experienced it closely, you know that it can be devastating. I mean, truly, in my head, the, the way that life was gonna work is that I was gonna find the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. I was gonna marry him and we were gonna have babies and that's just how it worked. And that's just not what the doctor relayed to me that day. And um, like I said, we were broken. Trent and I were broken. And so in that time, we had our community. 
We had our grow group. We had our people that we could turn to and that we could be vulnerable with. And we had to make that decision to be vulnerable because it's really easy to be private and to not share because that's the hard thing. The hard thing is sharing and saying, hey, I want you to know what's going on in my life. I'll be, you know, I'll be real with you for a second. That's hard, but that's what we did. We were real with our grow group and we told them, hey guys, we're crushed and we just want you to pray for us. If you could just pray for us, just please do. And so they did that and they were wonderful. Um, in that season of life, I was also coaching middle school volleyball. <sighs> and uh, I was at Clover Garden coaching one day. Uh, like I, I was coaching for BCA, was playing at Clover Garden uh, for that volleyball game. We're coaching, or I'm coaching. I look up and I see some friends from our grow group coming into the gym. And they go and they sit down beside my husband. And I am like so embarrassed because these jokers were not invited. And I don't want them to see me out here being all competitive and coaching in my non-graceful way, right? I'm herding cats out here. Um, but they were there. And I think that they were, you know, trying to support me in their way, even though they had no idea that they like sent me into like shock. Uh, but the game is going on and, and we're fixing the end and they get up and they walk out. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate y'all. Uh, didn't even say bye, but they walk out. The game ends, my girls get dispersed to their parents and my husband and I get in the car and we go home. And as we're fixing to pull into the parking lot, or not the parking lot. We don't have a parking lot at home. We have a driveway. <laughs> anyway, we're pulling into the driveway. It's a big driveway. Um, but we're pulling into the driveway and we see the cars of those friends uh, parked at our house. And we walk inside and y'all, they were fixing dinner for us. And if you know me at all, I despise cooking with everything in me. I despise cooking. I despise going to the grocery store. I despise putting the groceries up, cooking, washing the dishes because I still don't have a dishwasher, never have in my whole life. I hate it all. <laughs> and they did that for me. They took care of it. They took it off of my plate. And that might sound so little to some of you, but it was huge to me. And it meant so much. But even beyond that, after dinner and after the dishes had been put away and everything was taken care of, those people continued to stay. And we separated off into guys and girls and the girls we hung out in the living room and the guys I think maybe were in the kitchen. And they prayed for us and on behalf of us. They prayed for our little baby that had not been conceived, was not born. They prayed for what was to come. They laughed with us. They cried with us. But most of all, they were there. They were just there for us in a time that just felt so difficult and so crushing, and they were there. And so I wanna share with you on the screen right here, I've got this sweet little boy. His name is Levi Crew. He's a cowboy this day while we were at Tweetsie. Most days he wakes up and is a dinosaur. Some days he's a tiger, which means that I'm mommy tiger, and that's how our entire day goes. We have to growl at each other all day. Um, but he is three. And he is what came from those prayers, those people praying on behalf of us. It was that little boy. He's my miracle boy. Sorry. I'm just so thankful and so grateful that God cared for me so much in that season that he gave me those people to go on behalf of us and to intercede for us. So I carried Levi a full nine months and then some. Uh, so in your face, doctor, <laughs> um, I had a healthy delivery and he is a healthy baby. And in case you couldn't tell, I'm pregnant with our second little boy right now. <sighs> Thank you. He'll be here December 31st. Christmas is going to get a little crazy. Um, we'll see how that goes. Anyway, all of that to say, God was so good to us in that season, and he showed us hope beyond anything that I ever would have expected or imagined. And what's even cooler about that season as I look back is that I see how those people, those friends of ours that were in our girl group, that community of people that I keep referring to, they taught us. They taught us how to be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Not only were they that for us, but like Trent and I got to watch firsthand 
how important it was to have that. And now when we are beside of people who are in difficult moments in life, we know how to respond in, a, in an even better way than we did before. And so God used that season not only to produce a miracle and show us, hey, this is how much I love you. I'm gonna give you these people right now. But he showed us, he grew us, he taught us. And we have a testimony from it. So all of that to say, um, for the last three years, my mission field has been a little clearer. And that is my little boy. Uh, he is my mission field, right? And that's really intimidating, actually, um, because it's my responsibility to teach him the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. And that can be incredibly difficult sometimes, right? Because you know what a three-year-old's like. They're hard. Um, and I hear that it gets harder. I just can't imagine that. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, but I'm also so thankful that I have this place, Hope Church, to lock arms with during this time, during these 18 years that I have ahead of me to continue to pour into my little boy. He's in Hope Kids right now. And I know that he's learning about Jesus. And I know that when we get in the car to go home, I will be able to ask him, hey, what'd you learn today? And he might not get it right, but we'll, we'll walk through it and we'll talk through it. And he's gonna grow and he's gonna continue to learn thanks to Hope Church and the teaming up that we have um, with having Hope Church in our corner. And so real quick, I wanna share one last story with you that kind of brings this all full circle, at least for me and what this 10 year journey has been in my life. Um, but uh, a couple of weeks ago, actually it's been about a month ago, I was out in the lobby with Levi and he said, hey mommy, I got a potty. And you know that means like, let's go right now. Um, and so we go to the bathroom and it's, like I said, we're in the lobby. It's, you know, service is fixing to start. So it's really crowded, it's chaotic. And, and I get him um, to the bathroom. We come out and Tara Kepley stops me in the lobby. And if you know Tara, you know that she volunteers uh, with our kids and she's wonderful in the classroom. And she stopped me and she said, hey, Jenny, Jenny, I gotta tell you about something that Levi did last week. And y'all, I was ready to crawl under the table because I knew <laughs> that that kid probably had gotten on top of the table and had like did something inappropriate. That was my guess. <laughs> um, but Tara proceeds to tell me that there had been a little boy that was brand new to Hope Kids and that he was very shy and, and really wasn't into what was going on. He wanted to sit over uh, in the corner of the room kind of by himself and off to the side, kind of go unseen. But Levi had seen him and Levi uh, took whatever toy he was playing with at the time and he walked over to that little boy and he sat down beside him and said, can I play with you? And y'all, that's not the story I expected to hear. It's just not, but it brought tears to my eyes because I was like, oh my goodness, my little boy is going out and he's being a part of that great commission already, right? That was what was in my head. I, um, I brought this toy up here on stage today. Does anybody recognize this? Anybody? You lucky people. This, <laughs> this is Gecko from PJ Masks. Yeah, oh, we don't like Gecko. <laughs> she really draws me crazy. PJ Masks draws me crazy. That's what I hear all the time. Um, but this is Levi's favorite toy. He loves Gecko. And so when I think about the story that Tara shared with me, this is, the, this is the toy that I have in my head, even though I know this was not in the classroom with him because I don't let him bring it to church because it, it detaches. There's no way to like keep it together. I mean, what kind of, who makes a toy like that? Um, <laughs> I just knew he would lose pieces and that would be a, you know, catastrophe. Um, but this is the toy that I have in my brain, that he walked over to this little boy. He took the one thing that he had to have influence to say, hey, I see that you're alone and you don't have to do it alone. I know this is scary, but hey, I have this toy. Do you want to play with me? And guys, I can't help but feel like, like I said, that's just him stepping into this great commission where he sees people, he's gonna get his hands a little dirty and he's gonna, he's gonna do life with them. He's not gonna let them do it alone. And so if you've been here for any amount of time, um, you've probably heard Pastor, Sad, Pastor Tad say that God honors faith and obedience. He honors your faith and obedience. And I can't help but think that in Tara having shared this story with me and having gotten a little glimpse into what my crazy three-year-old at home is actually like when he's been put in an opportunity, put in a situation where he has an opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus. When I see how he responds, I can't help but think that that is God honoring Trent and I just taking small steps 
towards him. Small steps towards Jesus. We don't always get it right. And actually, when I say small steps, I mean, sometimes they're like teeny, tiny, itty bitty steps. But if we're going forward, I think that God honors that. He honors that faith and that obedience. And through that, I think he's setting the stage for Levi to see something really special, to see a model that hopefully, prayerfully, one day he is gonna mimic, that he is going to step into a relationship with Jesus, that he is going to take steps towards Jesus continuously over and over, that he's gonna enter into community that is pushing him towards Jesus, that he is going to choose to volunteer to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, that he's gonna see the needs around him and he's gonna rise to the occasion and he's gonna meet those needs. I can't help but feel like that's what God's doing right now in this season that Trent and I are able to just see it full circle. It's a really special thing. If you're here in this room today, I want you to know that I, I, while my, my role here at Hope Church is Next Steps Coordinator, um, I'm not coming to you as Next Steps Coordinator today. I'm coming to you as somebody who has experienced the hope of Jesus here at Hope Church, has experienced the hope of Jesus in taking tiny baby steps. And I wanna invite you to do the same because I know the difference is made in my life. And I know the difference that it can make in your life. You just have to choose to do it. That door that Alex was referring to where Jesus is knocking, it's just opening that door. And like I said, these steps can be little teeny tiny steps, but I would encourage you to take the steps. Thankfully, like Alex said, we have a process here at, at, at Hope Church and it's called Next Steps. And so if you're completely confused on what your next step is, there's a process to help you figure it out. And so I wanna tell you a little bit about Next Steps. I love that, by the way, in our Next Steps logos, that door continues to appear over and over again. And it's just this idea of walking through that door, of opening that door and allowing Jesus to come in and taking steps towards him. But the first step in Next Steps is connect. <clears throat> Excuse me. And actually, Connect is what I would consider was happening right here today. Connect is where we meet, we shake hands briefly, and I just tell you a little bit about what Next Steps is all about, what you can expect over the course of the next three weeks. It's a four week process. This would be week one. Week two is what we call follow. And it's during this week that we talk about what it means to follow Jesus. So we answer questions about salvation, we talk about baptism, we talk about what it means to truly dive into your Bible and study your Bible to know what it means to be in constant prayer, to have a prayer life. We talk about that and follow. In week three, we talk about what it means to grow with Jesus. And that's where we talk about grow groups and what grow groups are designed to look like here at Hope Church, what grow groups have been for us, for, for me as you know, the one who may be leading Next Steps, but also for the people in the room who are volunteering with me and teaching Next Steps. We talk about how to get signed up for them. So it's actually giving you action steps to take if that is your next step. And then finally in week four, we talk about what it means to live for Jesus. And that's a 24 seven thing. It's not just on Sunday mornings, which is kind of what I feel like I fell into as a, as a teenager growing up. It's not like that. It's 24 seven, right? Living for Jesus. And in that, we also talk about what it means to serve. And so we give you an opportunity. If your next step is to serve on a hope team, we give you an opportunity to do that. And so all that is made available to you through Next Steps. And it's because we want you to step into a relationship with Jesus, but not just to step into that relationship, but to live life abundantly with Jesus because that's what he has to offer. And so I say all this this morning, and I hope that it doesn't feel like an infomercial to you. I just want each and every person in this room to know that you are cared for by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and he wants to enter into a relationship with you, but he doesn't want you to be stagnant. He wants you to keep stepping towards him. And so that's what I wanna invite you into today. If you don't mind, close your eyes. I wanna pray for you. God, thank you. Thank you so, 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 so much for the people in this room. God, they're not here by accident. They're here very intentionally, very purposefully because God, you love them and you care for them. You care for their hearts. You care for their souls. You have things for them, God. You have things for us. Things much bigger than we could ever, ever imagine. And God, I just pray that we would each take a step towards you today, God. Take a step towards that bigger picture that we can't see here 
and now, but God, you have prepared for us. God, I pray if there are people in this room, God, that are feeling your knock, I pray, God, that they would open that door. And maybe that's to step into a relationship with you for the very first time. And if that's the case, then God, I just pray for those people, God. I pray that they would surrender in this moment, asking you into their hearts. God, if there are people here who say, yes, I, I've fallen into this category of just feeling stagnant and knowing that there's more and knowing, God, that you have a bigger picture for me to step into, then God, I pray that they would surrender to that knock as well, that they would choose to enter in through that, that door, that they would follow you, take steps towards you, that they would identify those steps, and that they would be called to action. God, I thank you for your love and your mercy and the way that you just continue to reveal yourself to me over and over and over again. And God, to the people in this room over and over again, because you are good and you continue to fulfill your promises. You continue to be faithful and we continue to be reminded of your goodness. And God, I just thank you for that. God, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope that you gain something from this content, that it helps you to follow, to grow, and to live for Jesus. We drop new content just like this every Monday morning. So we wanna invite you back. And the best way to do that is to follow, like, and subscribe on whatever platform you're watching to stay connected to everything we have going on here at Hope Church.